Hello, collective, and welcome back to the Moon Report. My name is Marlene. I am the modern mystic and your resident astrology and moon goddess. And I am so happy to welcome you back into this space where we get to talk about a new moon in Aries, a solar eclipse in Aries. And Friday, we will be kicking off with a Mercury retrograde. So the last moon report, I went through a lot of information about Mercury retrograde. So I won't be going through it this time around, but you can catch that previous moon report and catch up on what's going to start tomorrow on the 21st of April. Um, and I think it's going to be going through May 14th, if I am not um, mistaken. Yeah, I believe it's May 14th. And then it's going to be going through its post shadow phase, meaning it's going to be going back forward through the space that it had already gone through backwards, right? So it's going to go through that space again through the end of May. So those are, again, some of the dates to watch out for, but there's more information definitely in that video. So let's focus on this new moon that is happening in Aries, like I said, and it's happening tomorrow at 12, 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And it is at 29 degrees of Aries, specifically. Now, each house is um, 30 degrees. So when there's a planet on 29 degrees, um, it is a very intense placement. And we have both the sun and the moon there creating this new moon. And it is a very strong position because it is also conjuncting with the north node. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with the nodes, the north node tells us where we're going as a collective and personally. But in this case, I'm talking about our collective direction headed towards Taurus. So this eclipse is happening a few degrees away from the North Node. And that is also creating an intensity that we may have been feeling in the last few days, early on uh, before this eclipse. And this is all happening tomorrow. And I believe that this new moon and eclipse is giving us a boost of confidence, is propelling us forward in some way. It's, it's, like, it's like giving us this like, let's go type of energy. And, you know, we may have been coming from a period of feeling a little deflated, maybe a little bummed out. But with this new moon and solar eclipse, we're going to be feeling a boost of confidence, maybe even a boost of energy. So that's something good to look forward to. And new moons are about new beginnings and Aries is about new beginnings. And, you know, eclipses are about new beginnings and, and changes, you know, maybe not necessarily new beginnings, but changes and abrupt changes, sudden changes. And right now with this eclipse and, and, and this North Node, the way that it is, it's, it's pointing towards a new beginning that is not without some challenges. There will be some level of challenges that we are having to swift through to get this new beginning going. And with Mercury retrograde coming around the corner, it's almost like hurry up and slow down. You know, it's, it's, it's so confusing because we want to propel forward and we're feeling destiny calling us in some way, but we're going through a bit of an uncomfortable um ground here for us right like you want these new beginnings but you know you're going to have to go through discomfort to get it and to step into your power fully and completely and that's kind of um annoying a little bit because we've been through so much already and it just seems to get more confusing so you know i just want to say that it's valid it's valid and it's true. 
And although, you know, things will start feeling like it, they, they want to move forward, we have to be careful during a retrograde to not make any, you know, really permanent decisions and really serious decisions because of the nature of a Mercury retrograde where the devil is in the details and we may miss something and we, we, we try to avoid not to make really, really important and, and you know, lifelong decisions during this time. But of course, things come up. So we really need to have in mind that we need to watch out for these things and these details, right? We need to, if we are making decisions, if we are propelling forward, are we propelling forward with something brand spanking new that just came out of the woodwork, you know, and it was a brand new idea? Or was it an idea that was already brewing? And now you're just kind of finalizing and putting the, the, the loose ends together. If you can avoid making any decisions that have to do with contracts or legal agreements or anything like that, I would definitely do so. If there's anything new and out of the woodwork, like I just mentioned, I would definitely avoid stepping through something like that without doing a bit of pre-planning. And the good thing about retrogrades is that they're here for us to restructure, to rethink, to regroup. So if we learn how to take that time to do just that, we can really find benefit throughout this time. Now, this new moon is happening near Jupiter. And um, again, that's in Aries. And it's good. And it, it feels hopeful for this new moon to be close to a planet that is so benefic and, you know, so expansive and full of love. So, you know, we need to keep in mind, though, that with Aries, everything is going to take a little bit of bravery and a little bit of courage and probably some risk. And when you are planning and restructuring and regrouping what it is that you desire and you're calling in, what destiny it is that you're calling in, also keep in mind to remember to really allow yourself to receive from the universe also where it wants us to be and where it is that we are going to serve our purpose with the most alignment to why we came here in the first place, right? Destiny, right? So, you know, you know you're gonna need courage. You know that you're gonna need to, you know, be a part of what's coming, right? So, you know, focus on resting because with Aries, there could be some burnout, right? Um, we may really feel that initiatory like energy of Aries and we may really um, try to like do a lot of things and multitask. And really right now what we need to do is kind of like wait and see what's happening while we're navigating through this energy. And I'm saying this mostly because there is a square to Pluto in Aquarius that this new moon is in a hard aspect with. And this is about change and innovation that is coming, but not without its resistance. Again, not without, you know, its challenges, obstacles, and difficulties. So let's keep in mind that with Pluto, we need to dive deep. And maybe... It's just giving us a opportunity, let's say, to reduce, release and shed some really deep emotions, some really, you know, really, 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 really deep emotions that we may, like, even think, shit, do we even have any more deep emotions to shed and to go through? But we do. We do. And here I talk about that those emotions that are also hidden from us, you know, like maybe we'll be shown throughout this new moon and beyond these like few weeks, maybe things that are in our blind spot that, you know, we don't 
really see in front of us consciously, but we're dealing with in some subconscious level. So, you know, I want to offer you, um, I'm actually going to post it in Mighty Networks. I'm going to post um, this meditation that I did for um, journeying into your subconscious mind. And I want to offer that um, to you um, as a collective so that you may use that as a tool in the next few days to assist this access to this information because it's important. Like 90% of what we manifest comes from our subconscious mind. Really our conscious mind is very little in control of what we're manifesting. And that's why it's so important to work on our shadow on our hidden self, right? Because getting access to this information is obtaining power to manifest the things that you want and to co-create the things that you want in this life with the universe. So check that out. I'm going to post that not only in the moon report section, but I'll post it also in the main thread. And, you know, take, take it's 17 minutes. So take maybe an evening right before you go to bed or maybe a morning right when you wake up to go through that journey and give yourself that moment because there might be a lot to really, really learn from experiences like that. Mercury is also in conjunction with Uranus. And when I say these things like conjunction or square, Pluto is squaring this new moon and that means it's in a hard conversation, right? Where there's resistance. Mercury is in a conjunction with Uranus, so they're having an amicable, amicable conversation. And Uranus is sextiling, right, another amicable, amicable conversation with Mars, which is the ruler of this chart, because Mars rules Aries. So this is an important aspect that's happening for new beginnings, for sure. Right, but we're talking about sudden change, sudden, sudden change. And I want to make sure that I say that again, because if you find yourself that you are heading in one direction and then all of a sudden you're gonna be switching to a different direction and it feels so right to you, you know? Well, I would definitely wait till after Mercury retrograde to make any moves but I would definitely take the time with Mercury retrograde to plan out, to analyze, to, to, to see what's going on here and see if you need to retweak your plans, right? So, you know, it's a weird time, you know, but I really do want you to set intentions. And it's a weird time because it's almost like you want to move forward, but you can't move forward right away. But you can definitely dream and you can definitely bring the feelings of what that dream is going to feel like when it gets here. Because that is the number one thing when you want to manifest your desires. And Aries is all about our desires, our carnal desires, you know, which are important. They're important to analyze. They're important to look through. They're important to sit with, you know. and you can take this time to wait and see what the universe also wants you to do so that you can really co-create this dream of yours through you, right? You can be an active member of this dream with the universe. So I'm excited for us and you know, I, I know I could use the rest and the non-decision making for a little while. Um, so I hope that you can find a way to lean into this energy and, and, and lean in in a way where you can embrace all the things that are coming up for you and all the ways. Okay. And definitely check out that previous moon report because it does give you more information about what the themes are. It might be coming around this time. So 
I invite you to do that again. And I also invite you to be careful with ceremonies and rituals throughout this time. If you are going to go for a intention setting ritual or a ceremony, make it like about like your purpose, right? Maybe like speaking your purpose. And I was looking through some of my books and and I found like a cool little medi- um sorry, a cool little like ritual where and it reminds me of like the shamanic work that I do with my clan, um, the clan of the whistling elf. And we, you know, make bundles a lot. And this is kind of like a bundle. They don't call it that, but this is a a a, a drawstring bag or uh, some kind of cloth that you can make into like a little sack, right? And maybe bring a piece of quartz, crystal quartz, um, maybe some lavender, uh, an amethyst. You know, um, I'm I'm picking these like colors as well because it's dream work that you're going to be doing. You're going to be harnessing your desires with all of these items into this little bag. And then as you're doing it, um, it's said to light a purple candle, you know? So, you know, as you gather your items, you're going to need, like I said, a cloth or a drawstring bag, a crystal, um, clear quartz, amethyst, maybe some lavender, maybe some um, magical little essential oil, and um, create a sacred space for yourself, a quiet space where you can focus, right? And, I, you know, face the east, a place of illumination. If you're seeking your purpose, you want, the, you want to be facing the direction where it's going to illuminate that purpose. And then um, use that within a, you know, new moon time as to seeking something that you want to step into. And then also, you know, you can add a little incense, you can maybe put a little music, whatever gets you in that magical mood, but make sure you have no phones around you, no distractions, you know, get yourself in the groove. Set this time for yourself and begin to ask questions from the universe as you're creating your little bag, right? Make sure you clear all the items with some smoke or some sage and begin to ask, you know, what is my purpose? What is the place and the goal that I should be pursuing? Why am I here? And what is it that I should be looking forward to, you know, introspective questions like that. What is the direction that I can take? You, you guys know there's things that you've been trying to decide. Do I take this direction? Do I take that direction? You know, do I change direction? And begin to ask these things as you're creating this bundle. And when you close up your bundle, you affirm, you blow into it, you hold it to your heart, and then that evening, you put it under your pillow. And it's a small little ceremony and ritual to get insight and answers from your higher self, from the great spirit from God, from whatever it is that you desire, pray to, or ask answers from. And then wait. And this is a great thing to do during a retrograde because it might take several nights of performing this ritual for you to get the answers that you need. But you have the time. There is no rush. Okay? So thank you, thank you, thank you. I um, I hope that this new moon eclipse and this this really exciting time can you know open up a whole new and like 
exciting adventure for you. Um, definitely, I will be posting the this little um, ritual that I just shared with you in the comments of the moon report. So look out for that there. That way you, you know, you didn't know it was coming. So that way you have it written down. And, um, and yeah, I, um, I wish you so many blessings, so many hugs. I'm also going to be sharing more about rituals and ceremonies um, in a workshop that's going to be happening on the 27th of April. So I'll also share more information about that on the Mighty Networks feed. So look out for that and definitely see if you can make it. It's going to be on a Thursday night at 7, and we can go through similar rituals like this. Um, my idea and my intention is that you walk away from that workshop feeling like these things are more accessible to you and they're not so out of reach and they don't have to be so elaborate and they can be part of a practical spiritual practice in your life. So we're going to be doing some fun stuff with altars, some really simple ceremonies and rituals. So definitely look out for that link in Mighty Networks Collective. And until next time, I will see you in the full moon. Mwah. Many blessings. Ciao.